in this presentation, we are going to look at the Heligoland Treaty of 1890. The Heligoland Treaty of 1890. It was an agreement between the Germans and the British. An agreement between the German and the British. With the outcome of uh, the Berlin Conference, which one of them was that Europeans or European nations should avoid any form of war among or against themselves in the African continent. Well, the outcome of the Berlin Conference did not actually create a complete peace or complete understanding among these European nations. There were still areas of disagreement, there were still conflict in the area of interest in Africa and also other areas. But they basically tried as much as possible to avoid any form of war. And one of the areas of influence of uh, 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 this argument was between Germany and the British or Britain. Britain was having ambition in expanding in some of the areas where the Germans had interest. In order to achieve that, they had to deal with the Germans. And the Germans also were as well interested in sustaining and maintaining their influence. For this reason, there was or there were areas of conflicts in the in Namibian region, in the West African region, and the Kenya axis, and also the Zanzibar area precisely. But the British knew, knew that in achieving this conflict, the Germans might surely have to oppose in some areas. And this might degenerate, de degenerate to a war situation. They called or they requested for some level of agreement with the Germans. In that agreement, which is tagged in history as the Heligoland Treaty, or the agreement tagged as Heligoland Treaty, the British made some offers to the Germans. Some offers that are based on concessions to the Germans. One of them was to give the Germans the Heligoland island or um, a group of islands, although they are the Heligoland uh, was the largest, which was very important and very vital for the Germans. The offer of this Heligoland, which is in the, in the North Sea, was of very important to the Germans. At the same time also, the British gave Kapivi, Kapivi strife Kap to the Germans. Remember, as at that period, the Germans were in control of some colonies in Africa, which was referred to as the South West Africa colony of Germany. And there, were, there was also the need for the Germans to access some rivers, and precisely River Zambezi. And the Kapibi strife, which is today part of Namibia, was of importance to the Germans. And the British offered those areas as well to the Germans. The Kapivi strife is unique. When you look at the map of those, the, that area, you see that the Kapivi strife was surrounded by some other uh, African uh, countries. By, uh, it has the boundary with Botswana to, to the south, and also Angola and Zambia to the north. The strife was connected to uh, the you know southwest colony of uh, southwest Africa colony of Germany, which is today the uh, Namibia. And from there, you know, to the Zambezi, there was also connection between the strife and the Zambezi River. The Germany or the Germans we are given the control of the Heligoland Island, as I, as, I, as I earlier mentioned which was very important 
for the Jam, Jam, uh, for, for the German naval activities or naval oppression. When another area was that the Germans were given access to Jerusalem coast, which was later moved to be part of uh, the German East Africa colony, and which was uh, as well the part of uh, the Tanganyika, which is presently referred to as uh, Tanzania. In return, Germany gave Britain the uh, the 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 the, the, the Sultanate, the Sultanate of the Wutland, which is in the Kenyan region, and which Germany was in control of. But the British were having or they had serious interest in the Kenyan region. Germany withdrew from the or they withdrew their recognition of the free of the some level of freedom that they earlier agreed in the Zanzibar region. By so doing, giving Britain the go ahead to take over the area. Within a very short time, the British uh, uh, kind of um, declared protectorate region in the Zanzibar area. Uh, they declared pro pro protectorate status to the uh, uh, Zanzibar region. Then, the treaty as well explained the relationship between the Germans and the British in the West African sub-region. As at that period, Togoland was under the German control. There were also German, Germany controlled Cameroon. The British, there was, the British controlled Nigeria. So the Heligoland Treaty had also as its part of explanation and settlement the area of control and influence of the Germany vis-a-vis -vis, or maybe in contrast to the activities of the British. Well, the, uh, the treaty gave Britain the opportunity to push towards the control of the Zanzibar area. Well, there was something there was something very important for us to notice here. The uh, Heligo Land Treaty did not give the French the opportunity to express their own desires. The treaty excluded the French, and this did not go down well with the French. The French became very uncomfortable with the agreement between the Germans and the British. For this reason, the French stepped up their own push towards their own uh, colonial interests or their own ter territorial interests in Africa. This brought or okay, generated some level of conflict between the French and the British, mainly in the West African region. One of such situations was the Niger crisis. One of the conditions, one of the conditions, or one of the agreements, that, uh, one of the um, outcome of uh, the Berlin Conference was that rivers in Africa, mainly rivers Niger, the major ones, rivers Niger and uh, rivers um, and Nile, and other internal rivers should be allowed to be international or free transmission zones. But there are some disagreements in West Africa, which we are pushed by the French. The French had some control in some ter territories, and they decided to do some level of uh, um, personal interest seeking, which brought some, uh, some, some level of disagreement between the French and the British. Well, remember there was also the, there was the issue of the European nations not fighting themselves in Africa. To resolve this matter, the British decided to engage the French in diplomatic discussion and arrangement. For this reason, they signed the Anglo-French agreement which tend to settle the conflict between the British and the French. 
where Africa became um, operational points of the British, which later culminated in the total loss of control of many territories in Africa to the European uh, powers. Well, if you, if, you are please, if you are watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to our channel, share our content, and click on the notification icon so that anytime we have a new, con a new content or a new presentation, you will be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for still being part of our channel.